Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is what is the inbreeding coefficient of the individuals 5, 10 and 15. So 5, 10 and 15. Let's say this is chromosome number 1. So chromosome number 1 and you have two chromosomes number 1. One you inherited from the father side, another from the mother side. But this is homologous chromosomes and we can find the same genes in the same order on both. And we have also two homologous chromosomes, number two, number three, number four, and so on. So we have 23 pairs of such homologous chromosomes. And the last one, uh, which are sex chromosomes, can be two X chromosomes or can be X and Y chromosome, which are not homologous. Only small fragments on those chromosomes would be homologous, but all the rest are homologous. And for example, if we have a gene A, let's say this is going to be gene A here on the other homologous chromosome that you inherited from the mother side, you can have different allele, or that means the same gene, but with a slightly different code. It can be even single mutation, but such gene we would uh, give a new uh, name for this allele. And it can be dominant, it can be recessive, or such alleles can be uh, almost identical and doesn't affect a phenotype of the person. But sometimes recessive allele, most of the genetic disorders are recessive, can cause a genetic disorder in the progeny if we have a loop like this, as you see, this is example when brother and sister mate, and he is a progeny, individual number five, and here these two individuals are first cousins, this is mating of the first cousins, and this is mating of the second cousins, and all these individuals would be result of the consanguineous mating. So mating of the close relative, which may be related to each other by sharing the same genes from their common ancestors. So we would say that they are related by descent. And if any of these individuals would inherit this recessive allele from one of the ancestors, then uh, such a person may show some genetic disorder. Those, if he would be heterozygous, like his parents, for example, such genetic disorder is not going to manifest itself because there always going to be present dominant allele, which is going to produce normal protein. So let's find inbreeding coefficient of the individual number five. First of all, we have to find the probability to inherit two same alleles from both father side and mother side. We say that this is condition of being identical by descent. For example, let's find probability for her to inherit two alleles A1. So genotype of this person in this case is going to be A1, A1. And as I said, this can be deleterious condition that may lead to some genetic disorder. So let's find the probability to inherit A1 allele from the father side through his, as you see, grandmother. So grandmother has two alleles and she can pass any of these alleles to her son with equal probability. So probability to pass A1 allele is going to be one half or 50%, one half. So let's put this A1 allele here. Of course, uh, this individual is going to have two alleles. Another allele can be whether A3 or A4 inherited from the father side. But for us, it's not important. We are looking for the inheritance of A1 allele by individual number five. And probability that individual number three is going to pass this allele to his daughter is going to be again one half because he is going to have two alleles and probability that he is going to pass A1 allele is going to be one half. So let's put one half here. And the same is true 
that uh, daughter of this couple is going to inherit a1 allele from the mother side. The probability is going to be also one half because from the mother she can inherit with a a1 allele or a2 allele. And again, probability that she is going to pass it to her daughter is going to be one half. So now we have a circle here which shows us probability of the individual number five to be homozygous for a1 allele, which would equal to follows one half times one half times one half times one half. One, two, three, four. One half, one half, one half, one half. We have to multiply all these independent probabilities and we are going to get one half times one half is one quarter times one half is one eighth times one half is going to be one sixteenth. So one over sixteen. This is going to be a probability for individual number five to be homozygous for a one allele. But this individual also can inherit two allele A2 from father side and from the mother side. So he can be identical by descent for allele A2. So let's also include it in our calculation. So A2, A2 would have the same frequency of the occurrence and probability. So one half times one half times one half and times one half, which is going to be one sixteenth. So let me underline A2. And also this individual number five can inherit two A3 alleles. So A3 and A3 can be his uh, genotype for particular locus. And our calculations is going to be the same. One half times one half times one half times one half is going to be one sixteenth. And the last variant would be uh, that individual can inherit two A4 alleles. So again, his probability to inherit two A4 alleles would be one half times one half times one half times one half. And the answer is going to be also the same, one sixteenth. Now we have to add all these probabilities in order to find probability that this individual for the locus A would be homozygous and would be identical by descent and would have two identical alleles inherited from the same ancestor. It can be grandmother or grandfather. So let's add these probabilities, one sixteenth plus one sixteenth plus one sixteenth plus one sixteenth and we are going to get four over sixteen or one quarter. And this is going to be our answer for the individual number five that inbreeding coefficient for this person is going to be twenty five percent. That means that 25% of all loci would be homozygous, would be identical by descent. It can be with the two alleles A1 for this particular locus. But again, because we have 23,000 genes, out of 23,000 genes, 25% would be identical by descent. So would have two alleles inherited from the same ancestor. Kins in breeding coefficient for this person is going to be 25%. Now we are going to do our calculations much faster. For example, let's find in breeding coefficient for individual number 10. Again, we have common ancestors, which is going to be this couple and probability that individual number 10 is going to get a one allele from his grand Grandmother is going to be one half, one half, and one half. So from the mother side, so he's the mother side, and to get the same A1 allele from the uh, father side, so this is going to be father side, is going to be the same one half, and then one half, and one half. 
So we can say that probability is going to be 1 half power 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 passes and times 4 because we have in the common ancestors for this locus 4 alleles to choose from. So times 4. As you see, we added the same probability 4 times here, but we also can instead multiply by 4, we are going to get the same answer. So we are going to get 1 over 64 times 4 and it's going to be 4 over 64 or 1 over 16. And if we divide 1 by 16, the decimal number is going to be 0 0.0625. And if we need an answer in percent form, we have to multiply by 100 or move this decimal point two places to the right. And we are going to get 6.25% this is going to be in breeding coefficient for the person number 10, who is going to be a result of consanguineous mating between two first cousins. So we will expect that 6.25% of all his loci are going to be identical by descent and also this number give us in breeding coefficient. Now let's find in breeding coefficient of the individual number 15 who is going to be uh, a daughter of the consanguineous mating of the second cousins. And let's take uh, this time different allele, let's say A3 from the grand-grandfather. And I'm going to use uh, green color. So the probability that grandfather would pass, grand-grandfather would pass this allele to his son is going to be one half and son would pass it to his uh, son would be one half and that son is going to pass to his daughter is going to be one half and daughter would pass to her daughter is going to be one half. So we can put one half here, one half here, one half here and one half here. So we have found the probability to inherit for this person number 15 a3 allele from the uh, common ancestor from the mother side. Let's now find the probability to inherit the same allele A3 from the father side. And this is going to be uh, one half here and then one half here, one half and then one half here and one half here. And let's count passes. And this is going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Eight passes. And our calculations would look as follows. So one half power eight times four is going to be one over 256 times four would give us four over 256. And this small number is going to be 0 0.015625, which we can round to, we can say that this is the same as 0 0.016. And again, in order to find the answer in percent form, we have to multiply this number by 100 or move this decimal point to places to the right and we are going to get so times 100 and we are going to get um, 1.6 percent and we have found the uh, probability for person number 15 to be identical by descent for any of these alleles which is going to be 1.6 percent. This is true for this locus and this is true for all loci in the whole genome of this person. So we expect that only 1.6% of all loci are going to be identical by descent and 
this number is also going to be in breeding coefficient of this person. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.